Oh, um, well, you know, it was really kind of a, it was an awesome day of sailing. Um, 20 to 25 knots, uh, about a 115 degree wind angle, um, you know, averaging speed in the low 20s. Kind of a messy sea state. The, the sea state probably uh, slowed, slowed us down of a knot or two, just just it's kind of messy. Um, but just, you know, another normal day on the water on a Volvo boat, you know, but making great, making miles. And uh, we had had a couple fantastic hours. The wind was actually starting to back off a little bit. Um, down into about 20 knots or so. A little squall came through and it was back up to 25 as we took a reef. Um, reef was in. Guys were sitting back in the back of the cockpit again. Um, I had just gone below deck to have some lunch and all of a sudden, you know, somebody shot the boat with a cannon. You know, that's what it sounded like. The boat stood upright, went on deck. Everybody was there. Everybody had all their sinkers and toes and limbs. And, uh, saw the mass line in the water, you know, with all the sails. It's just, it's just a, it's just an awful sight. Awful, awful sight. Just, uh, so we went to work. I mean, that's all you can do. We went to work, and we're gonna go to deal with it. The closest land, Ken, to where you are now is Tristan de Cunha. Realistically, what's the possibility of you guys stopping there? Well, right now our plan is to try to get to a small little island out here in the middle of the Atlantic called Tristan Island. Um, we're hoping we, we've just withdrawn from the leg. We have a jury rig. We have about 15 feet of mass left. Um, we have our storm, the tri our storm ship kind of awkwardly set off of this little stump of the mass, and we're supplementing that with really low revs of the of the engine um, just to make more progress towards the system. But uh, we're going to need some help to try to make this next leg, and, and we're, you know, we have all of our fantastic shore team, the Puma shore team, um, the Berg shore team, uh, and of course, Volvo's fantastic trying to sort it out right now and, uh, and get us the help that we need to, to expedite our, you know, get to Cape Town in order to make repairs and to be ready for the next leg. That's the goal. How realistically do you think you guys are going to be ready for the next leg? Uh, I think if um, we didn't think there was a chance, uh, then you have serious, I mean, you have serious depression on the boat right now as it is. This is a team that has worked together now any of us for years together, but he has an entire team for you know, a year and a half uh, straight to get to this point in time. So as you can imagine, um, it's not, there aren't a lot of smiles right now, but I would say that one way to make it even worse is to proclaim that there wasn't a chance to make the next leg. That, that's, that's our goal, and we're not going to stop until... Uh, could you just explain the reasoning behind it withdrawing from leg one? Well, we have to use our engine, um, so we have to withdraw. There's no way the jury rig is, is working, but it's a tiny, tiny amount of sail area, and it's um, it's almost upwind. It's like close all course to get to Tristan and then on to Cape Town really light air and uh, if we did start using our engine we'd be out here for weeks and we kind of look at all of our you know it's, it's all about getting points right um, turning points that's right and uh, we think by sacrificing the points on this first leg it gives us a chance to actually make points for the second leg and the important possibly make it so that's our goal. Ken, I can imagine this is an absolutely awful day for you um, and for the rest of your crew, but could you just describe to us what everybody's feeling right now? Well, I think a lot of the guys now are just, you know, an amazing job of teamship. First of all, we have all of, 
all the parts of the mast are actually on board. Um, all the sails are on board and intact. Um, the boat, you know, is nicked up in a bunch of places. The guys are nicked up in a few places, but for the most part, you know, a tragedy, uh, you know, or a hardship could have become a tragedy, and 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 that didn't happen. So there's a lot of work to do this this afternoon, just get everybody and and the boat and and sort it out for our next journey. And our next journey is to go get, you know, we're kind of running low on food here. You know, it's not, it's not a pretty picture. We don't have enough fuel at all to, to get even close to this island. Um, you know, we have food for about, uh, about four more days, I think. Um, so we're already rationing that just in case we're out here longer. Um, and I think reality is, is, is one by one. You look around at the guy's face and it's gone from a busy afternoon of just trying to keep the pieces of our beautiful boat and put, you know, together to, holy crap, I can't believe it's not so up inside. And one by one, you see the guys crawling into their bunks and exhausted on the face. I, I can't even fathom what I look like right now. Um, yeah, reality is set in and, and major setback, but um, one that we're going to have to work for if we don't have a choice. Oh, Ken, thank you so much for talking to us. I can imagine you've got much bigger and better things to be doing right now, but um, thank you so much, and we genuinely are really sorry to hear about this. Okay, my pleasure. Yeah, that cold here is going to be a little bit longer for us, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get it.